Okay, so chapter three, this will form a, a foundation for a lot of the rest of the material that we discuss on uh, claims and validities. First, we kind of need to lay some groundwork talking about variables and how to operationalize variables. So we'll talk about the differences between a variable and a constant, um, a measured variable versus manipulated, and then how we go from a conceptual variable, a concept, basically, um, to an operational definition, something that can actually be measured experimentally. So um, measured variables, so first of all, a variable, that's something that varies, okay? So it's going to have um, different levels, um, two or more. Um, sometimes it just has two levels, like you were in the treatment group or in the placebo group, for example. The variable in that case would be group, and it's got two levels, placebo versus treatment. Or it could have many different levels, like IQ score. Um, that's another variable that you might be interested in, and it may have, um, you know, hundred, hundred different levels, you know, from the max to the min. Uh, sometimes there can be an infinite um, number of levels um, with certain types of variables. Okay, so um, <clears throat> that's what a variable is. Um, sometimes we just measure them, um, like you can't really assign um, somebody to have a certain age, uh, that's just something that you measure, um, whereas a manipulated variable is something that's controlled. So that would be like the placebo versus drug. You know, it's either you receive one or the other, and that's something that you have control over as the experimenter. The, uh, <clears throat> so we start with um, a kind of conceptual variable, um, say satisfaction with life. Some people are more satisfied, some people are less satisfied um, with their life. And then um, you go from there to a definition. Well, what do we mean by um, satisfaction with life? Okay, so um, we're getting a little bit more, we're drilling down a little bit further here. Um, so this would be a careful theor theoretical definition of the construct, so we know exactly what we mean. So in this case, a person's cognitive evaluation of his or her life. Okay. There's still different ways that you can measure that, though. Um, you might look at um, survey responses. Um, you might look at um, responses not of um, the person themselves, but somebody who observes that other person, um, giving a rating of how satisfied they think they are. Um, or you know, you could have some um, more objective measure, uh, like how often somebody uh, reports feeling happy um, on social media or something like that. Okay, so there are different ways that you can operationalize that um, variable so that it's something that you can actually measure. So in this case, this is a very common um, thing to do in psychology. We we make a questionnaire. So you ask somebody to um, rate on a scale from one to five. Um, I am satisfied with my life. Okay, um, so that now is a variable with five levels. Strongly disagree all the way up to strongly agree. Okay, so this whole process of describing variables, it's really getting down to the nitty gritty, okay? Um, you're taking something that's more broad and abstract, and you're getting it to where you can actually, to something that you can actually measure. So you can, um, usually it's something that you could actually write down on a, on a notepad, right? Um, uh, a scale from one to five, numbers one through five, something that you could actually enter into a spreadsheet and uh, run numbers on. Okay? Um, whereas satisfaction with life is not something, um, well, it is something that you can measure, but you need to determine exactly how you're going to measure it. Um, how do you determine how, are, in this particular experiment, how are you going to um, measure how satisfied somebody is with their life? Sometimes maybe it's just yes or no. Are you satisfied? Yes or no. Then they would just have two levels. Um, this is a big part of experimental design to determine what's the best way to operationalize um, these um, concepts. Okay. Um, and these are just some more um, uh, examples. Um, car ownership. Um, here's an example of an operational definition. Of course, you might operationalize this differently. Um, but maybe it's just self-report. Do you own a car or do you not? And you've got um, two levels to this variable. You either own a car or you don't. Um, 
Uh, that in case, in that case, that'd be a measured variable. You're not manipula manipulating that. Um, here's um, exposure to disinformation, the third one down. Um, that is an example of a manipulated variable in which reader, uh, participants were assigned to two groups. Um, and exposure to disinformation, there's many different ways in which that happens, but for the purposes of the study, we're operationalizing it as um, you're hearing false information either one, uh, hearing um, false information either one time or two times. Um, so you have two different levels of exposure. Um, okay, so um, here's just one more example, um, school achievement. Uh, maybe this is done through self-report, what kind of grades do you get, or you can um, have more objective measures, like you actually get records, report cards, um, or you might um, base it off of a teacher's observations. Okay, um, So yeah, you may start out with some question, you have some concept, some uh, phenomenon that you want to study, uh, but a big part of designing an effective experiment is to really whittle it down to what exactly are you going to measure. And we will move on to part two.